Streaming on JW.org. On October 1, 2022, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania held its annual meeting, one of the most exciting events on our theocratic calendar. While streaming on WESA FM from Pittsburgh, CBSNews.com, ReligionNews.com, GEORIE.com, Fox43.com, ABC27.com, WGAL.com, FoxNews.com, and many, many more, on February 7, 2023, the Office of the Attorney General of Pennsylvania, yes, the birthplace of the Watchtower, held a second press conference about multiple men being charged with multiple crimes related to the sexual abuse of children, one of the most devastating events on your marketing agenda. Winston made this very easy prediction in Video 1086, published on November 14, 2022. By advertising the hotline that was set up by the Pennsylvania AG's office for, get this, Jehovah's Witnesses people, members and ex-members of the Watchtower Babylon Tract Society to call in and report their abuse, a floodgate was opened for lots more complainants and much more reports to be received. And here we go again. And so I say, again, to anyone with any information regarding similar allegations of sexual assault, I urge you to please contact our hotline, 888-538-8541. Do you know what the cruel irony is about all of this? The number one reason the organization is faced with this problem is because they have worked tirelessly to cover it up. We've talked about what a record is. The question is, why has this come up? Why is it that we have records management now? We've been functioning as an organization for years. Well, we know that the scene of this world is changing and we know Satan's coming after us and he's going to go for us legally. We can see by the way things are shaping up. So the organization has said, we've run into difficulties in the past because of the records we have. Like most departments, you get the questions, you go through, you create a draft, and you think it looks really good, you pass it by, or someone in your department passes it by you as the overseer, and you look at it and say, no, no, change this, change that. Well, you do a few drafts, and if you're like Justin and I, that goes around quite a few times. We look at all those that were not approved, all these uh, drafts, and we get rid of all drafts. And the reason is, is because there's many comments that are sometimes made on drafts. Those are the ones that get us in trouble. Any notes taken? whether hard copy or electronic, should not be forward, forwarded to anyone else. So we know that you'll take note of that announcement. We don't want to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. What grieves us is Jehovah's name, bringing reproach on that name. We want to do everything we can to honor that name. What a colossal failure it is now. Garrett Losh said something in his highly hypocritical talk about truth, the truth of which he has not truly come to appreciate. Truth is like a mighty river. If you try to stop it with the dam, it will overflow the dam. Nobody can stop the truth. That's right. Nobody, including the governing body, can stop the truth about this organization coming out. They have tried to cover up because they don't want to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. To declare God's name to be Jehovah, be a religion that spread lies, then take on God's name as part of your identity is to bring reproach on God's name. You created JW.org to push your propaganda, and I particularly love how the JW.org logo is being showcased in the various news reports on how Jehovah's Witnesses are sexually abusing children. How wonderful! Do you now see the reproach that you are on God's name? All those attractive buildings with Jehovah's name on it, declaring you are his witnesses, but multiple men are molesting even more multiple children, using Jehovah's name as the bait. They are Jehovah's witnesses, they are safe to be with, right? Nice seeing the watchtower on ABC 27 News. Five Pennsylvania men now charged with multiple cases of child sexual abuse, all Jehovah Witnesses, two from the mid-state. The state attorney general says that they used their faith to help commit the crimes. They used their faith to help commit the crime. They used the fact that they are called by God's name to commit the crime. Sonica Bargo joins us now with more Sonica. 
Valerie, two of these men are facing charges in Lancaster County. One has been arrested, but the other is still out there. The acting attorney general announced charges against all five men this morning. She says these are the results of a grand jury investigation. We have a duty to protect children in Pennsylvania. Acting Attorney General Michelle Henry is These making a commitment. This office will do absolutely everything we can to hold these men accountable. Charging five men, Jehovah's Witnesses, in multiple cases of child sexual abuse dating back to the 1990s. Some of these cases were uncovered when the AG's office filed charges in 2022 against four other Jehovah's Witness members. And many courageous survivors came forward and called the hotline. Two men are charged in Lancaster County. Prosecutors say Norman Avalis, an elder in his congregation, assaulted two twin sisters when they were just five or six, left alone with him while their mom worked. Investigators say Avalis later groped a 10-year-old girl. Years later, that same girl was abused by another man, according to investigators. Abamil Valentin Matos, who they say sent the girl inappropriate pictures and pressured her into sexual acts. The details of these crimes are hard to listen to. Of the other three men, prosecutors say one abused his two granddaughters, another his niece. The third was the legal guardian for the two girls he's accused of molesting. These children deserve a community where they can grow, play, learn, and pray and not be preyed upon. For some advocates, this story is just beginning. And I believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg for the Jehovah Witnesses. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an emotional roller coaster for me. On the one hand, I am delighted to see the organization being exposed like this. The dam they created is being overflown by the river of truth. I am excited to hear someone who knows, saying this is just the tip of the iceberg for the organization. That's music to my ears. But what it must take to lead to this music to my ears I could do without. It is depressing to listen to these horrors being inflicted on children. When I was shown this video by Sherry Babysitter, tears filled my eyes and I was put in a depressed mood. My heart sank and my stomach felt heavy. It took a bit to pick myself up to get back to work. I felt I wanted to do a video on it immediately, but took a breather. Sometimes I try. I try hard to understand these men. I try as much as possible to be human to them and try and understand what they are going through, if they are sick, and it is a hard world to imagine. Even if it is humanly possible to understand their turn on, as hard as it is to imagine, it is humanly impossible to understand their cruelty. Children. Little children. I plan to do a standalone video on one of the cases. Anyhow, it's not just any guy who is saying this is just the tip of the iceberg for the organization. Mike McDonnell works with SNAP, the survivor's network of those abused by priests. He's certain there are more cases out there. Accused at ages 60 or 65. The first thing that comes to our mind is this is not their first attempt. But he hopes Tuesday's charges encourage more survivors to come forward. I can tell you that the biggest step that they made is seeking that justice today. The acting attorney general of Pennsylvania announced child sexual abuse charges against five Pennsylvania men, two in Lancaster County, all members of Jehovah's Witnesses. Fox 43's Harry Lee reports on the repercussions for the organization. This is the case for which I plan to do a separate video. Two of the men charged were members of this Jehovah's Witness congregation in Lancaster. 44-year-old Norman Aviles Garriga is alleged to have molested at least three young children between the ages of 5 and 10 in the late 1990s. He was an elder in the Jehovah Witness congregation, which allowed him to build a rapport with members. 42-year-old Abimel Valentin Matos is alleged to have assaulted a 15-year-old girl around 2011. The congregation was aware of his romantic interest in the girl, noting that they would approve of it if certain conditions were met, including the presence of a chaperone and the commitment to eventually marry her. But let me just ask, could this be true? Could the organization really consent for a relationship between an adult and a minor? And when does a religious organization consent to a marriage? Well, yes, my church would not consent to a homosexual marriage. 
but it is powerless to stop two consenting adults doing what they wish. So I thought it would be a matter between two consenting adults, and in a weird case, a thing for her parents to decide. These are factors I plan to cover in the video, so you just got you a preview. Jehovah's Witnesses have an internal disciplinary system for complaints of child sexual abuse. It's unclear if they investigated these allegations, but the Attorney General's office says all charges stemmed from victims coming forward. Victim advocacy group SNAP says the organization itself needs to be held accountable. Officials within the faith that knew of this abuse did nothing. To me, that's complicit. And being complicit in crimes like these is sometimes as equal to the crime itself. This is the part that I love to hear when they are zooming in on the organization. These are not just a matter of rogue members giving in to their diabolical desires, but something that is fostered by the culture of organization itself. Of course, I am not of the view that the organization wants children to be abused. I am sure they are disturbed by the allegations. But by the very policies they enact and the way they treat victims, they make it easy for the predators and the organization a breeding ground for pedophilia, and for that, they deserve to be held accountable. Jehovah's Witnesses said in a statement, As Christians, Jehovah's Witnesses despise the mistreatment and abuse of anyone, especially precious children. While it is not appropriate to comment on cases pending before the courts, we want to express our concern for all victims of abuse regardless of faith. Who are they trying to impress? Well, we know the answer. Everyone. But it rings hollow. First of all, they don't care one iota about children of other faiths. In Jehovah's Witness eyes, those are not spiritual children. And today, that brother has a beautiful Christian wife and several spiritual children, and he is serving as a fine elder. And for as long as they are not baptized Jehovah's Witness children, they are likely viewed as enemies of Jehovah, children of worldly people. Sometimes you'll hear people say of a little baby, look at that little angel. But more accurate would be to say, look at that little enemy of God. So don't come with your sanctimonious words to paint yourselves as saints in this. It's easy for me to dismiss the Watchtower's statement, knowing the DNA of that organization. But just as these unsuspecting children and their families fell prey to the perpetrators, so is the general public unsuspecting of the Watchtower, will take their statement as genuine, and that is sad. One ray of hope is that society in general does not take lightly the sexual abuse of children and people may not be so quick to swallow excuses from religious leaders. And so, I love it when their deeds get a spot on USA Network. These cases, as all of them are, are disturbing and sad. But this one, in particular, digs deeper. Because in this case, all of the defendants and all of the victims come from the same religious organization, the Jehovah Witnesses. And many courageous survivors came forward and called the hotline. So as a result of our ongoing investigation and the individuals that reached out to us on our hotline, we are here today to announce these charges. Josh Shapiro was the Attorney General of Pennsylvania when the initial charges were laid in October 22. He was at that time running for governor on the Democratic ticket against Republican Doug Mastriano, a far-right state senator endorsed by former President Donald Trump. Shapiro won by over 791,000 votes or 56.5% to Mastriano's 41.7%. This made the way for a woman, and I deliberately said, a woman. In the Jehovah's Witness religion, women do not take leading roles, and I am thinking specifically now about the judicial committees that hear cases of sexual abuse. Not one lady is there among the men who can even begin to imagine what these girls, and yes, these little boys too, but especially the little girls are going through. Well, acting AG, Michelle Henry is here. She is a prosecutor with experience dealing with sexual offenders. She could be the Watchtower's worst nightmare. So, governing body, you undermine women. Now you may have to face one a bit too much for you to handle, or, at least, so I hope. Much of my career 
spent as a prosecutor prior to joining this office was focused on prosecuting those that sexually abuse children. I'm deeply aware of the impact these kind of cases have on the victims, have on the victim's family, and it is our duty to seek justice, to be their voice, to hold these individuals accountable so that they may have some hope of more moving forward in life. Man, I just love the attention the organization is getting. Court documents say some allegations against Aviles date back to the late 1990s. The acting AG says that Aviles remains at large while the other men named today are in custody. Prosecutors also wrote in court documents that one victim of Aviles reported abuse from another congregant, something that would be addressed in a future presentment. There you have it. Confirmation that this is not the last of charges to come. But let's pause a minute and get somber about this matter. Seriously now. Someone who was sexually abused as a child by one Jehovah's Witness man is reported to have been abused by another. It is bad enough when a woman has to deal with the memory of being raped multiple times, but it must be worse to remember being raped by multiple men. And when it is men who they trusted because they bore Jehovah's name, I can only imagine what it must be like, for I can never, ever fully understand it. Not two worldly men, but two men from the organization. The Watchtower has successfully taught people the academics, clearly now, just academics, of knowing God's name. This Hebrew name is commonly pronounced in English as Jehovah. Acts chapter 15 verses 14 and 17 tells us that Jehovah has taken out from the nations a people for his name. And we're proud to be the people who bear his name today as Jehovah's Witnesses. How successful has the organization been in getting Jehovah's Witnesses to reverence God's name? Does it mean anything to these men that they are called by God's name, all this thing about a people for his name? Now what about the rest of us? who are not anointed Christians, but who call ourselves Jehovah's Witnesses, are we also God's people? Well, most certainly. And what a proud honor it is for us to bear the name of the only true God. I am happy that he was clear enough to state that it is they who call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses, not God who declared them thus. And yes, it is an honor for you to bear the name of the only true God, but what a reproach it is to God. You are honored. God is dishonored. Well, my word to parents who want to keep their children safe. Never, ever, under any circumstance, leave them alone for one minute with people who call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, and please lend some support in the fight to be restored to good health. Winston currently needs to do a medical procedure before a well needed surgery, but the cost is a hurdle, and time is not on his side. It's not just the daily pain that's a problem, but it is creating other complications. He can't wait to get back to himself. Instructions are in the description how you can assist. Your help will be highly appreciated. Until the next video, please take good care of yourself. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you.